hello and good morning it's Phil Thatch and today I am hanging out at the Tennessee River Park and I'm wandering around with the Canon R7 and the 100 to 400 lens and I've also brought the 100 millimeter macro lens and it's getting towards the end of summer it's very late August now and this garden that I'm at right now I actually came here earlier this year when it was absolutely beautiful and all the blooms were fresh and now at the end of the summer it's kind of overgrown and uh, I started out this morning wandering around this little garden and making some photographs of some diamonds in the rough. Every once in a while you'll find a bloom here still doing its thing so I made some photographs of what's left of this garden. I kind of looked for some insects as well but didn't see any so I think I'm going to go down to another garden which I've also already visited this summer but while I'm heading down there, let's take a look at any pictures that I might have gotten here. Even though that garden was kind of in rough shape, if you look around, you can still find beautiful things to photograph there. I like this bloom that wasn't open yet, and I love these two pink flowers. They're right against the ground with all sorts of dead stuff around them, just looking beautiful. Now I'm here at the Ellen Davenport Navarre Teaching Garden, and this garden is in much better condition than the garden I was at earlier this morning. And who knew that okra blooms were so beautiful? I had no idea. They've got some okra plants growing over here as well as other things. And I've been photographing mostly flowers, but also some insects now and then. Here is one of those okra blooms that I was talking about. What an absolutely beautiful flower. I had no idea. And they had two varieties of okra there. One had a lot of red to the plant and the other one was all green. But one thing that they had in common was their blooms look almost exactly the same. I wonder if the okra tastes different between the two varieties. I've even seen a couple of birds, a uh, Eastern Phoebe and an American Goldfinch. Here is the Eastern Phoebe that flew up and landed on a trellis. And take a look, I shot this 400 millimeters and one one hundredth of a second. The 100 to 400 does definitely have great image stabilization. And here's the second Phoebe photograph. And here is a skipper. I photographed lots of skippers this morning. And here is the first one that I'll share with you in the video. And then I decided to take a photograph of this interesting looking pepper. I thought it was kind of unique looking and beautiful. And then I shifted gears completely and made a photograph of a fly here on a leaf of one of the plants. And next up is something I photographed a lot this morning. This is a pipe vine swallowtail, just a absolutely beautiful butterfly and in great condition on this flower. And here is an American goldfinch. It's on the little fence that goes around the garden and it was eating, I think, a zinnia. And here is that same male American goldfish finch it had flown over and landed on some brown-eyed Susans and I took a couple of shots of it in this area the first shot was at 1 3 20th and then I slowed down to 1 200th and some butterflies too this morning here is another fly photograph and I also photographed this uh, I think it may be a moth of some sort and this is an in-camera focus bracket and stack so I thought that turned out nice. And then I took a number of photographs of the pipe vine swallowtail. There were two of them that were kind of flying around and landing on these lantana flowers and uh, getting some pollen or whatever it is that they do. And I made as many photographs as I could. I couldn't do a focus stack on these because their wings were constantly flapping while they were doing what they were doing. And as you can see, I'm using a faster shutter speed, one four hundredth of a second because they weren't sitting still at all. Here's another photograph of the male American goldfinch. Now it's over on the Xenia flowers and I had to crop this one a bunch. It wasn't even big enough to make 4K. And here is one more photograph of the pipe vine swallowtail there on the lantana flowers. Lots of butterflies and lots of skippers. And for autofocus, I've used an idea that my friend Forrest came up with. Use single point turn tracking on but turn subject tracking off don't set it for animals don't set it for people don't set it for cars turn it off and you can put the single point right on the eye of the butterfly press the focus button and then move around and recompose and the focus point will stay on the butterfly's eye because the camera is not good at detecting a butterfly's eye as a animal eye however animal eye detect will a lot of times 
focus on a skipper's eye. Strange. Here is a few of the photographs I made of these skippers. These are not butterflies and they're not moths. They're skippers. And they were also enjoying the lantana flowers just like those butterflies were. And I think the skipper has a little bit more personality than a butterfly. The butterfly may be more beautiful overall with its incredibly beautiful wings, but I just love the eyes of the skipper and I think it has a lot of personality and they're super cute and I really enjoy photographing skippers, especially on these beautiful lantana flowers. Another thing about Forrest, he has taught me how to use flexible value on the camera. Usually I shoot in manual with either auto ISO or full manual. But now uh, Forrest made a video about how to use flexible value where you use one wheel to adjust between aperture and shutter speed and exposure compensation and ISO and the other wheel, the front wheel, will adjust whatever the back wheel has it set to adjust. And he made a really quick video about it and it's, uh, it's pretty informative and pretty helpful. And I'm gonna put a link to that in the end screen. So take a look at that and maybe even subscribe to Forrest's YouTube channel. Here is one of those leaf footed bugs that Heather and I have photographed sometimes this summer. And this is an in-camera focus bracket. And this is also an in-camera fo focus bracket, but it was moving its rear legs around. And this is what happens when you try to do a stack and your subject is moving. This fly was also moving around and I tried to do a stack with it and it didn't work, but I did just pull out one of the shots and edit that. Here's a Xenia flower. This is also an in-camera focus bracket that I made with the Canon R7. Great feature that it has. And this final photograph is another Xenia that was focus stacked from a focus bracket in camera. All right, that's gonna do it for me here at the Ellen Davenport Navarre Teaching Garden. What a beautiful place to make photos. I enjoyed working today with the Canon R7 and the 100 to 400 lens exclusively. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell if you want to see some more. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.